<coughs> My name is uh, Dr. Joseph Krop. I'm the medical doctor practicing in Mississauga, and I'm a fellow of American Academy of Environmental Medicine. I'm also a member of and trained by the International Lyme and Associated Disease Society to diagnose and treat chronic Lyme disease. You may remember that in 1989 I was investigated by the College of Physicians of Surgeons of Ontario for diagnosing and treating patients who were exposed to pesticides and other chemicals. I was formally charged in 1994 and in 1999 I was found, quote, guilty, unquote, of professional misconduct. The charges laid against me included recommending to my patients that they filter their tap water, eat organic food, take vitamins, and avoid using toxic products, including pesticides. <coughs> the charges seem absurd today, now that we have developed laws to protect us from workplace toxins and cosmetic pesticides. But that was less than 10 years ago when I was found guilty. In June of this year, the college again decided to investigate me. This time because I treat patients with chronic Lyme disease. The official complaint from another rock doctor is that I diagnose and treated a disease that does not exist. This time, like the last time, no patient has complained against me. <clears throat> I never intended to become a doctor treating chronic Lyme. At the medical conference six years ago, I learned that Lyme is now emerging as an epidemic. To be clear, it is caused by the tick-borne bacterium called Borrelia burgdorferi. Much the same like listeriosis is caused by the bacterium Listeria. Lyme is caused by bacterium Borrelia. It is recognized in medical literature, even at the US Center for Disease Control. And it is even treatable with antibiotics like other regular bacteria. Sitting here on the right, Karen was my first chronic Lyme patient. She had not been responding to my usual treatment method, so on hunch, remembering the conference, I tested her in three different US laboratories, and the result indicate that she was positive for Lyme. I consulted with the American Lyme specialist with whom I later trained personally to start her treatment. She responded so favorably that I began to attend annual conferences online and learn the standard of practice for diagnosing and treating chronic Lyme developed by International Lyme and Associated Disease Society. I became accredited to treat chronic Lyme and if I diagnose Lyme in my patients who come to see me for help, I'd treat them. I began to look into the records of patients I had not been able to help in the past. I re-examined some of them and what I found was a very high percentage of Lyme infections in these patients. Many patients with chronic and degenerative diseases such as chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, depression, scleroderma, Crohn's, arthritic disorders were positive for Lyme. 
I have treated all of those cases and I had been able to hold or reserve progression of symptoms in the majority. The main problem is that screening tests available for Lyme in Ontario misses more than 95% of cases of chronic Lyme. We consistently have to send blood to United States, which has a different modality of testing that is more accurate in detecting Lyme, especially in the later stage when symptoms become chronic. Over the last five years, many lives have been turned around by diagnosing and treating chronic Lyme in my office. You have heard three stories, and many more are here today who will happily be telling you and sharing you, with you their own stories. The dilemma for patients is the politics surrounding the disease and the opposing viewpoints and guidelines regarding Lyme disease. In my view, politics have no place in healing patients. It certainly didn't help the people who are speaking to you today or many more in my practice or possibly thousands of those patients who don't even know that may have a Lyme infections and who think instead that they may have an incurable chronic disease. Chronic Lyme disease is known as great imitator. The symptoms resemble those of multiple sclerosis, Crohn's, scleroderma, and any other neurodegenerative diseases. It is by luck that people with this problem find Lyme literate doctors like myself and are able to get a diagnosis and treatment and many of their lives turn around. But it shouldn't be by luck. It should be a matter of common practice across province and across country to consider Lyme, to test for it, to diagnose it and finally to treat it. I get phone calls every day from patients across the country desperate for treatment. I cannot help them all. I am only one doctor in one city. My patients with Lyme come from North Bay, Sudbury, Perry Sound, Sault Ste. Marie, and even from Yukon. The problem is real, and we urgently need a public health campaign on Lyme disease for doctors and the general public. In my opinion, this is the public health crisis which is ignored. Unfortunately, many doctors refuse to become involved with chronic Lyme patients for fear of intimidation and disciplinary investigation by their provincial college of physicians and surgeons. We are talking about devastating consequences of individuals from a simple tick bite. You can get it in Muskoka, in Point Pili, in Ottawa, in Dryden, in Collingwood, and even in Mississauga. It can affect anyone in this room and the other rooms sitting today and hopefully watching this press conference. It can affect your children. It can affect your siblings. It affects more people than listeriosis, than SARS, and exponentially more than West Nile virus. The tragedy is actually not in the danger of emerging of this disease, but is in, in fact that our government and the public health system has failed to protect us from it, and our doctors have failed to learn about it, diagnose it, and treat it appropriately. Thank you.